And throughout this conversation, I keep coming back to Sarah's question. She said, who, who do I go to? Who holds space for me? I think that was her question. Who holds space for me? And I think that's the biggest question of the day because we talk about mother hearts and we talk about our role as mothers. And if we're not centered, then where are we going to bring our children, right? And so I've been thinking about being centered, about who holds space for me, about an anchor. A, a brief question. Yeah. The, I may know the answer to you in the back of my head, but it's just like been bouncing around um, since earlier in this conversation. Um, we've been talking about the Savior holding space for us um, through prayer. And I feel like I haven't really caught on to that yet, or maybe I just haven't figured out how, um, just because from basically the minute I wake up to the minute I fall asleep, um, I am taking care of like super little human beings and needing to always be on for them. So lately my prayers, I've, I don't know if censoring is the right word, but translating into little kid language almost so that they can also understand prayer so that they can catch on and start to pray themselves. Um, so I guess my, my question at the root is, how do you make time for yourself to have quiet time where you can allow the savior to center you? I feel like, at least for me, that if it's if there are if there's lots of noise and commotion in the background, it gets distracting, and I'm not really able to be centered. Uh -huh. um, but you all are more experienced mothers than I am, and I'm wondering if you maybe have any encouragement or uh, experience that so, you could share. So I can guarantee you right now that every face every name on this page knows exactly what you're talking about because we've all been there and so you you could have started in just your first phrase and we could have filled in all the rest of it for you so no for one we absolutely know what you're talking about so now i'm going to let other moms um share some of their thoughts about that and i'm going to just insert that it's not just in prayer that he holds space for you so so um it's it's not just the physical act of you kneeling and having what you feel like is an adult you know meaningful on your level kind of a conversation with him but i'm going to turn it to other moms ida um i love um i'll share a couple things so first of all i feel like the Savior meets us where we're at and he knows where we're at, right? So like, for example, the story in the in the New Testament where the woman's at the well and she's there in the middle of the day getting water and, because she's avoiding everyone else because of the circumstances of her life, right? Yeah. And the Savior comes to the well, to her. And she is the first person that he tells that, he, you know, I'm the Savior. And that's pretty profound. Like he met her there at the well. He could have been anywhere else, but he knew who she was and everything about her. So I feel like, first of all, there's a lot of times in the scriptures where like Moses had to go up into the mountain, but the savior met the woman at the well. So maybe he understands just what it's like to be a woman, first of all. <laughs> but then I, I was thinking about some of my experiences, like having newborn babies, you know, or little babies. And, and I nursed them and they slept in bed with me like all of my kids. And so, like you said, I would wake up and here's a baby wanting to eat. So it's like, okay, they're, you know, like I couldn't sneak out of bed very well <laughs> to go and have a quiet moment because I would usually wake up to the baby, right? But, um, and then there was a time after one of, uh, after a couple of my kids where I had postpartum anxiety that was really bad and I couldn't do anything, you know? But I remember just being able to, like sometimes just lay in bed and talk to Heavenly Father, right? I'm sitting there nursing my baby and I'm in my mind talking to the Lord. And sometimes out loud a little bit, but mostly in my head, just having a conversation and just being like, I need help or 
um, thank you for this day or whatever it was to talk to him and share him the feelings of my heart. And some of those moments, I know like they were really hard times in my life, but I felt like I was given like little, like, like manna, you know, I was given just a little bit that daily bread to get through that day, to have the strength to just keep going. And sometimes I feel like it's really like that, especially when you have little ones. It's just like, if I can just, I'm just going to do whatever I can. And Heavenly Father is going to give me just a, just enough to get through that moment or that day. Like in Come Follow Me, it talks about uh, other Christopherson and his experience. And he's having this every, he used to be like, I need a miracle because I can't do this. You know, I can't, my business is going to fail and I'm going to lose everything. But instead he started praying, like, I just need to be able to figure out what to do this moment or this day. And that's how it is, I feel like, with motherhood, especially in the beginning. Um, just, this is a hard day. I got to get through. <laughs> what can I do? This is a hard hour. <laughs> so I don't know if that helps, but that was my thought. Well, I love it, Ida. Okay, who else? Jen? So I'm really new to this idea, but I'm checking out the Brooke Snow's um, meditation stuff. And today I watched one about visualizing, um, visualization. And so um, it was about healing. So you, you imagine the person you're praying for that they're already healed and you imagine like things they would do if they were healed. And I thought, oh, this is great. Cause, and I showed it to my kids too. And I I said, we can just do that even while we're having family prayer. Like each one of us can be, while we're praying for someone out loud, we can each be imagining like something they would do if they were healed or what that, what that would look like. And I thought, oh, I can do that like anytime, like for about anything or like even imagine the savior's there with my kids or like has his arm around me while I'm reading a book or something like so I'm going to try that more often and just even not even using words, maybe, but just, just imagining, just using that visual part. I love that you brought that up, Jen. <clears throat> I think there's so much power in that. There um, was a statement there in uh, that said faith and hope are a product of us visualizing things, picturing in our head, the possibilities of something different happening. And I love that. I mean, it was more concise than that, of course, but, um, but it was good. I thought, wow, that's really interesting. Okay, Linnell. My thoughts went from um, this idea of visualizing. And I remembered that Melanie had an experience with her seeing lessons mm -hmm. and her teacher invited her to pray the song. And that really gave her a different experience. And then that took me to thinking about how in the scriptures we're invited to, you know, we are promised that we will always have the spirit to be with us. And so I'm thinking of this word always, and then the scriptures always also tell us to pray always. So that was my train of thought. And I think this idea that I have right now is that what if we could pray always and it wasn't a specific moment? It's good to have specific moments of quiet and calm and focus, but what would it look like if you were praying always? So that's just a thought to sit on and, and I, I don't know, I haven't fully thought of that yet. But also I wanted to ask you again, Sarah, what else have you tried? I know you mentioned praying with your children, but it's in um, like simple terms. And so what other ways have you sought to have a relationship with prayer or to pray? what other experiences have you had? So Sarah, think about that for a minute. I'm just gonna to add to Linnell's thing to say that praying always, this idea of praying always, I feel like that is my current state. I, I, I feel like that is where I am. I do, I do kneel down and pray and have those other conversations too, but I feel like, <laughs> I feel like it's just a continuation of, the prayer that is always there because I don't know how to do it. Otherwise, I, I've kind of learned in my life from from the time of having small children that that's the only way I could. I felt like for lots of the times. 
And then I established that connection and the whole idea of like, he meets us where we're at. I, I, when I read that, wherever I read that, I know some of you kind of, whatever your, your comments were kind of alluding to that idea that, you know, um, it, it's not like, I don't, I'm not saying this is a principle, like a true principle, but I love this concept that man has to go to the mountain to meet God, you know, but that God comes to us where we're at because he knows what our days are like. He knows our schedules. He knows he just knows what our lives are like. And so he comes to us anytime. And all we need to do is open that that door, you know, just invite, invite him in. And he, he's right there and he'll be right there. So that's just my little, my little tag on to Linnell's comments. So Sarah, go ahead, sweetie. Um, so the question was what I've already tried to uh, do to develop that relationship, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm a little embarrassed that I haven't tried more um, just for the perception of um, starting out from an impossible place. <laughs> I'm sorry to cry. No, that's why we're here, Sarah. Um, but I'm just thinking about my day yesterday. Um, in the afternoon, I um, I was caught in this messy house where I'd done just the minimal of dishes for days and it had just piled up in a really extraordinary way because that's how dishes <laughs> pile up. Um, and the floor was messy and there were, <laughs> I hadn't, cleaned up after each of the meals that my toddler had eaten that day so she had leftovers just all over on the table and I just was caught in this place where I I couldn't and so at that moment my prayer was can I just have time can I just have time to organize to create a place of order where I don't have to feel like I'm living in filth. <laughs> just let me clean my kitchen. Um, and that just came out as a sentence and that was all I could muster. Um, and then the, the toddler prayers <laughs> all day. Um, for each meal, we we try to say a prayer, and um, we say a prayer at bedtime. But I sing um, the song of a heart of the heart is a prayer, right? Mm -hmm. um, I just I'm sorry, Lino. I don't have a better answer. I, I wish I could <laughs> give you one, but I guarantee really, she's not her. looking. She's not looking for a better answer, sweetie. We just want you to be doing what exactly what you're doing. Just sharing. Yeah, yeah really, my prayers have just been <laughs> these little desperate prayers for help. Thanks for sharing, Sarah. As you were talking. I was able to feel your desire that you are praying. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. You're reaching out to heaven. And in that moment of despair and chaos in your life, you turned to heaven. That's what prayer is. And maybe, maybe you want a different experience right now. But from what I heard in your question, your question was, how do I reach a point where prayer holds space for me? I think that, and I think you're there. That's what I felt as you were talking. And so my question was more an invitation for you to reflect and for you to recognize that you are already doing things because you, in that moment of desperation and of need, you turned to Heavenly Father. Lindsay Bunting, mm -hmm. I'm gonna 
ask you to talk. Sorry, sweetie. That's okay. I was just commenting. Um, um, what did I even stop so any of it? Sorry, my dog's barking. Um, I was just typing, I guess I didn't send it. Um, that he, um, Heavenly Father hears and he cares about those little desperate prayers. <laughs> Lori, you're gonna make me cry. I know, I'm God, sorry. Darn it. <laughs> um, those are all I remember praying in those years. <laughs> just those little bits of like can I just have five minutes of quiet because I needed it so badly when all the noise and the and the touching like I just felt like I was always being touched or like holding somebody and it was so overwhelming some days I just thought I can't do this anymore like I can't I can't do it anymore I just felt like totally giving up because it was so hard so hard I think all of us here have felt those moments of like I can't do this all by myself. I can't. And that's when I would just have that desperate little cry of like, I just need help. I need help. I don't know what I need help with <laughs> specifically. I don't even know what to ask for. I just need help. And that's all I would pray. I would just, just randomly throughout the days and weeks and years. And, um, and then I would go on and I would get through the day and I would lay in bed. And I remember thinking you know every night I get in bed I feel so happy I just feel so grateful for the things that I have and the things I get to do for my family and I just felt this overwhelming gratitude every night and I started thinking and realizing that is from answering my prayers like it may not get any easier during the day but he's sending me to bed with a heart full of gratitude and that made me want to get up the next morning and do it all over again um but so i think the key is to looking for the ways for his hand in your day and as soon as you start realizing he's there with you and you're not so alone even though it feels like just so much and nobody's there to help you um, realizing later at the end of the day how did he answer that little prayer to clean my kitchen did my kitchen get clean Maybe, maybe not. Maybe he, maybe he did answer it. And like, um, somebody helping with the kids or somebody cleaning the kitchen or just helping you get through cleaning the kitchen, or maybe he just helped you not feel so overwhelmed about the kitchen or those prayers are answered in so many different ways. But as soon as we can start to look for how they're being answered and how he is so aware of us and so aware of our needs and finding those little answers that he's giving us, then it gets a little easier and holding on to those moments of peace and gratitude and hearts full of love because that will just keep you going through the next little bit that you have to do <laughs> yeah you can get a lot of mileage out of a couple moments <clears throat> that's what i'm picking up on through this conversation is just learning a different style not and not needing it all to be in one big chunk but savoring the little moments and even the little prayers and even the little answers and it's it's almost always only little moments little tiny little teeny tiny things where you're like the gems you know you just you grab and hold on to that one teeny tiny little piece because you're not going to get any big big ones yeah that's when i fell in love with that scripture by small and simple things are great things brought to pass those tiny little things you do throughout the day um, go a long way. And those tiny little prayers you say with your toddler are so big and all of it is big. It just feels so small when you're in it. And I loved Ida's comment up here, just to, just to add, not to, not to, but just, um, where is it? Ida said, don't be afraid to pray from your heart, even if you don't feel like your children are going to understand your words. It's okay for your meal prayer to be, Heavenly Father, please help. And you think, you know, and I'm thankful for the food, <laughs> you know, or please bless the food. Your kids are, you know, it's going to, it's going to go right past them. But if that's what you need in that moment, just you go for it. You do whatever you need because you, what well, you're, the thing is, we don't talk about this and we should talk about this because um, every single one of us feels the same way. 
but but you we don't talk about it and so then new moms are feeling like they're doing something wrong they're not enough they're failing when they're having the exact same experience as everybody else yeah jen i was just i don't even know how to say it but um yeah not adding on top of it the guilt that you should be doing it differently or that somehow other people have it figured out like i always would see these comments of like how people get up at 4 30 a.m and so I just had this thing and I still kind of have it that I just have to get up early or else, I mean, then I'll finally get this connection and this prayer thing. And, but just this guilt there that I was never, I wasn't doing it right. I didn't know how to hear him. And, but like Linnell said, like just realizing what you are doing and acknowledging that and accepting where you are and that you're doing your best. And I mean, but I, there, I don't know the balance there because I do still believe it would be really good to get up early and do more of that. But I just, maybe I'm not there yet. So I feel like if I don't guilt myself, I'm not going to try anymore to do it and I'll just give up on and I'll never try to do it. But, but yeah, I don't want to have the guilt when I want to be able to accept what I am doing at the same time and yeah. still want still want to do better. We get ourselves into that vicious cycle, you know, of just being being so hard on ourselves. And there was a time when I got up early and I've talked about that, but I don't talk about it to guilt anybody into doing it. The thing with me was Heavenly Father told me I needed to get up early. If he's not telling you that, then you don't have to. Well, I you think don't. he's been telling me for years. I just I've done it off and on, but that's that's the hard I part. It, I just feel guilty. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard if you feel like you're supposed to, you know, then you just you do when you can and you pat yourself on your back on the back when you when you make it and when you don't you just say, you know, I'm working on it. You just the guilt doesn't get us anywhere. Yeah, Ida. And I think too, like, Heavenly Father doesn't expect perfection today. Sure, right? Never. No. So if he's encouraging you to get up early, you can be like, okay, I'm gonna work on this. I need your help. You know, I have been trying to get up early. <clears throat> Not super early. Okay. <laughs> but a little early on than I'm, I like, <laughs> I'm stretching myself. Right. But, and you know, today I slept in and I was kind of like, Oh, I slept in, but at the same time, uh, like I can start again tomorrow. I don't have to kick myself about missing today or not getting up early today. I can just start again and it's all right. And, and, you know, Heavenly father wakes up the prophet in the morning in the middle of the night when he's got something to tell him so i feel like if it's really important he's probably just gonna wake me up too <laughs> but in the meantime i'm gonna keep trying to just to do my part no no, no i no. love that also i don't know if that's a principle i'm just <laughs> maybe that's I my rationalization <laughs> no but i love it and i love that you the whole this idea of just just as a casual comment i can start again tomorrow you know and i love that about the meditation that it that it teaches that principle of when your mind wanders you know which it will do that's just a thing that's going to happen you forgive yourself you come back and begin again i love that and i think that that's one of the key reasons that um that is brought up is because you get to practice that and that because we need that we need to look at it like that forgive yourself come back and start again there's no perfection in this life. We're not going to get there. And beating ourselves up about it is what Satan wants so that we feel discouraged. Yeah, whoever. I don't know. Linnell, Sarah. Sarah, I was wondering if you... Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was wondering if you saw Melanie's suggestions for practical times yeah. in the day that you can pray. Thanks, Linnell. Did you see Melanie's suggestions in the chat? I can read them to you since you're holding baby, she said a few practical moments to sneak in some personal thoughtful prayer in those years of little kids while nursing a baby in the evening or middle of the night, early morning, or before other kids awake. If you get to go grocery shopping by yourself while you're driving, or once you park before you go back inside the house, in the bathroom, during nap time, she was just giving some ideas of when you can sneak those prayers in. I love those ideas. And I think that um, our phones, you know, are great, wonderful tools, but they can also be distractions to keep us from having those moments we could have with heaven, you know, in between stuff. Also, somebody said acknowledging, oh, Lindsay said acknowledging his hand in our lives, start looking for that, being aware of that, because once you do that, you start seeing, oh, he's with me. 
I'm not alone. I mean, I may still have a pile of dishes in the sink, but I'm not alone. He's right here with me. And um, I, there's a really great book slash talk and it's on, you can listen to it through Deseret Books and it's called Receiving Answers to Prayer. I highly recommend that to anybody who feels like you're struggling with that concept. Listen to that talk. It's so sweet. It's so good. But in that, he says, why not attribute all the good things that happen in your day to God? Why not? What's that going to hurt? So you're in a hurry. You make a red, I mean, you make a green light. You know, now that's just part of me. If I make a green light, I'm like, thank you. <laughs> you know, I have no idea if I'm getting help with that, but why not acknowledge heaven? You know, something, just something good happens. Anything. I'm outside and I, I don't know. I successfully kill a grasshopper. Thank you. You know, I'm like, thanks for the help. You know, just anything that happens so that I'm constantly aware of the fact that he cares about me and what's going on in my life. And it matters. And I know I told you about this, but when I was struggling and feeling super guilty about my garden and like I've give, been given this space, I need to be doing something, you know, and I was feeling just all the guilt and all the horrible, you know, feelings. And I prayed about, okay, I need help. I need to know where do I start? What do I do? And I was expecting this big, long thing of all the stuff that I needed to do with this gift that I've been given, you know, of this space. And the answer I got was plant flowers. That's all he wanted me to do was go plant some flowers. Not because, not because I needed to do the work or because he needed flowers, but because the flowers would make me happy. And I could do that. Jen, I, I wanted to add, is Jen still on? Mm -hmm. I wanted to add just one more thought. Um, going back to a conversation that we had, must have been, a few weeks ago, or maybe even a couple months ago, I lose track of time, but we were talking about motivation and how guilt is fleeting, but love stays. So, so using, so focusing more on the love than the guilt, um, will, it, we decided in our conversation in the long run that, that that'll be the key to, to change and to motivation and to doing what we want to do. That's so good. That's really good. I love that. I put the author for that book the or the talks. It is so sweet. I'd recommend it to everybody because it's just so faith building. It's just, it's really sweet and tender. Yeah, Melanie. I've got to go in just a minute, but I have a, a short, silly story that um, is just kind of an example of a fleeting prayer being answered. So um, my son has been looking forward for the last like 700 miles that I've been driving to when our van hits 80,000 miles. <laughs> and so like every time we get in the van, he's like, what is it at? How many more miles do we need to drive until it hits 80,000? And so we've been getting really close. And um, last time he checked, it was like 20 more miles. And then I drove my other son around and then I had to go to the store a couple of times yesterday. And when I parked at the store, I realized it was at 79,998 miles. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know if, if it's, if I'm going to be able to get home before it hits like past 80,000 miles, like, cause I know he wants to see it, you know, cause, and so the, the store, I thought it's gotta be more than two miles away, maybe three or four, like, I don't know. And I know that it mattered to him. <laughs> and so it's so stupid, but like, I just, you know, said like a, a fleeting prayer as I was driving home, like, and it, it feels a little silly because like there's an exact distance, you know, the odometer is gonna say what it's gonna say. But um, as I was driving home, like, some tiny things happened here or there to, to shave off a small amount of the distance. Um, something happened last second where I was going to have to stop at a red light on the train track. And so I swerved into the, uh, the other turning lane where, you know, this huge intersection, I wouldn't have to swing so far as I was turning and like small things like that, that just the flow of traffic, I ended up doing like the, the narrower distance. <laughs> and as I was parking at my house, I was like, Oh, please don't pass to 80,001. Please don't pass to 80,001. And it stayed. I was like, yes. So I got to have him come out and, and look at it. And he was just so excited. And it was just such a silly thing. 
but um you know those little things matter and it was just a fleeting prayer i didn't have to stop and like be super conscious of like having a fancy prayer but you know heavenly father listens to all of our little cares and and he knows our hearts and it's you know having a prayer in your heart it means something and and okay. he can still answer those prayers That's all I wanted to share, but I've, I've got to go. Thank you so much, ladies. I will well, talk to you later. <laughs> Melanie, that was beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Gosh, that teaches us a lot, doesn't it? That those little teeny tiny, very temporal things can be answered by heaven because they matter. <clears throat> okay. Well, Linnell, I've put you off so long. Do you still want to talk about it? Are you okay? Yeah, of course. With that? You want to? Okay. Sarah, are you feeling good? Are you... I'm glad you brought up your question. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? That was a great discussion and I really appreciated it. Yeah, I, I feel like I have my question answered. Good. And know that we that's love you and be... we're cheering for you. Yep. And that's going to be a continual battle, my friend, because you see, we're all still there. <laughs> just different. I don't know if that's encouraging, Lori, but that's true. I know, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're never going to get out of this, Sarah. You'll this way you live your life. <laughs> just listen to Linnell. Just ignore me. Don't, don't even. <laughs> another understand. refining process, right? And as we go through that, we learn what we're capable of. Yeah. Yes, really, truly. I'm saying not, I'm, yeah, well, it's going to just, um, I wasn't going to do this, but just really, really fast. So I'm driving right to Utah, right? I'm going to, to my trip. All good things, all things that felt like they were not selfish things except for one. And even that was still a question mark. Like it was still like, you know, I'm going to pray about whether Heavenly Father is going to let me go do this thing on Thursday night or not. But all the other things I was doing for other people, you know, it was kind of like a, I don't know, like a service thing. I mean, I was getting good things too, but um, so I'm driving and I just passed Baker and I'm going up the hill and my car just dies. It just stops. It like shuts off. And I, I, the tender mercy, you know, there's nobody in the right lane because I'm pulling a hill and my, my engine stops. I have nothing. I can't accelerate or anything. I just need to get over to the side of the road and I make it all the way over to the right side. And then I'm, I'm there in the desert for an hour and 20 minutes waiting for a tow truck. Even that, I didn't have good cell connection, so it wasn't getting through. I wasn't, I'm trying to get a hold of AAA and it kept dropping, 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 and I'm feeling very vulnerable. And um, <clears throat> get a hold of somebody finally, an hour and 20 minutes later, they show up, take me back down to the hill to lovely Baker, California, the tallest temperature in the world, temp temperature gauge, you know, in the world, lovely place. And I'm there for six hours, just sitting in my car or, or pacing around trying to figure out what I'm going to do, how I'm going to solve this. My husband's in class. And so I can't, I can't contact him except for just a tiny bit in between. And I, the whole time there, I was thinking, I like, I tried to listen to the radio and I couldn't, I just wanted to be fed. So I was listening to podcasts about come follow me, you know, and about wandering in the desert and the murmuring and, you know, relying on God to, <laughs> to rescue you. Um, <clears throat> and I was having these really great thoughts about it. So while I'm standing there waiting for the tow truck and while I'm in Baker trying to figure all this out, I keep thinking about, wow, I'm having my own wandering in the desert experience you know i'm not really wandering in the desert obviously but i am in the desert and i am stuck a little bit and i am having to try to figure out what you know and um and even you know i get to the car repair place and the guy's like oh yeah it's your engine it's this isn't good this is you know you're looking at maybe five six thousand dollars you know and in my current state it's like oh i just laughed i just said oh okay yeah of course and then i cry started crying i'm like i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry he's like it's okay don't cry I'm like no i'm sorry i go walk away you know and i'm just thinking oh and how do i tell my husband this you know put that burden on him and yeah Anyway, but I thought, okay, I'm not going to murmur. I'm not going to murmur. I'm going to trust God that, you know, this is all he knows. He knew where I was going. He knew why I was going. He knows about all these things. He stopped me in California, four hours away from home, a lot easier way to get the van back home, you know, than if I'd been further along. Um, I had time and days to figure stuff out. 
nothing was pressing that was gonna anyway just all the thoughts I also was thinking about what is murmuring for me because I'm not gonna murmur murmur that's not gonna be my response but what is my version of murmuring you know is it questioning whether he can really answer me questioning his purposes question you know how can I go through this trusting him and so it, it was good it was good for me you know and then I had a possibility I could have left um, yesterday morning with a friend and still done the trip but I had to work out some things and and I was working them out and people were helping and it was all looking like it was gonna all be still be able to happen and be fine and I went the day was super long because we had to go rescue the van get four hours there hook it all up four hours back but even that was wonderful it was just my husband and me and we were driving for eight hours uninterrupted nothing else to take our attention and we enjoyed the drive that was a sweet thing and then we got back and had just all the things to finish it all up and got home and it's like 7 30 and my friend needs to know if i'm bringing my stuff over because she's going to bed because we're leaving at four in the morning <clears throat> so i you know hurried and i stink i'm gross it's just so gross and i go in i shower and then i go in to pray and i pray and i get an answer and i think ah, I don't know. I don't know if that's, then I start all the doubt. Am I getting an answer? Is it just me? You know, and so I'm thinking, I don't have time for this. I need an answer now. You know, please tell me I have too many feelings involved in this. I don't know. And I just want to do thy will. That's all I want at this point, you know? So I pray again, I get the answer. I'm like, okay, all right, thank you. <laughs> and I, you know, I don't get to go or I'm home. <laughs> it's all, it's all okay. I don't understand at all. It's not really big things. It's nothing that's super important. But I, but I'm trying to listen and I'm trying to not murmur. You know, it's like the end. But I don't know why I shared that. I have no idea why I shared that. But we all have our experiences, you know, that being feeling alone, feeling like we're wandering in the desert. And we just need to know that he's aware of us. And even if it doesn't get better for a while, it's okay. It really is okay. We just can't see what he can see. And we need to trust that, that he really does know better. He really can see. And when we can learn to not throw the guilt at ourselves and not do the negative thinking, just believe that he loves me. He knows it'll be okay. So I'm going to trust him. And we move forward with that tiny childlike faith that he knows best. Just like when our kids will take our hand and let us drag them wherever it is we drag them, you know, through life and teach them and do whatever it is we do with them that we feel like is, you know, better for them, for their good. It's the same thing with him and it'll be okay. We just need to have trust, trust, enough trust in him to just barely be able to hang in there. Anyway, sorry. <clears throat> Yeah, I know. I love that. I've been reflecting on that a lot too. Did he bring me to this place to fail? You're right. No, he didn't. Just like he didn't do that for the Israelites. Yeah, there are good lessons in there for us to learn. Really, really good. Okay, sorry, Linnell. You're fine, Lori. We're happy to hear your experience and we learn a lot as you share with us. Thanks for sharing. I recently read the story about Jonah and the whale in the story Bible with my kids. And I was reflecting on how the whale could have seemed to be a huge setback. Like, uh-oh, I'm dead. <laughs> if you don't see the future, you could think that that's the end, right? That, that the whale means doom. And if you are living this experience and you're in the ocean, and you get swallowed by a whale and like, what are you going to be thinking? And so we know the end of the story. And we know that the whale was the means by which he could get back to shore. But until you see the end, that, that could be really scary. And so I've been thinking about this idea that sometimes these setbacks, like the huge whale in my life, can be really confusing. But if I wait a little bit longer and if I keep my trust in the Lord, then he can deliver me to shore. And that's been a powerful metaphor for me recently. Um, Lindsay shared a while back, just before she started doing outsiders, is that what it's called? Outsiders. Okay. How she was like, felt drawn to do it, but was also didn't like the idea of being out of the home and was more busy by doing that. Is that accurate? Is that what you were feeling? Okay. So 
when Lori invited me to translate for this Mothers of Influence group in Guatemala, I was like, am I supposed to do this? I feel very inadequate. I don't know if I can do that. That's really scary. I'm not confident in my abilities. And I, I, I was filled with a lot of doubts and insecurities. But at the same time, I kind of felt like, well, there's no reason. Well, I mean, you know, like it, it was confusing to me. I don't know if it's just an opportunity for me to learn to say, no, thank you, Lori. I don't want to do that. Or I can't do that. Or I'm not able to do that. Or if this was a, okay, Lanelle, this is your time to grow. This is your opportunity to be stretched. And so I don't know if this is a whale where I'm like, this is really uncomfortable for me. And I, <laughs> I, I can't fit one more thing in my schedule. I'm so busy with other things. And sometimes my husband tells me, you're not doing your stuff well. Can you please, can you please step up and, and fulfill your responsibilities in the home? So I've got pressures of home and trying to manage everything and my husband's feedback from me. And then I've got like just life updates and life plans and, and a lot of busyness, similar to what Lindsay was feeling. But I feel like at the same time that if Heavenly Father wants me to do this and he brought me through inspiration to Lori's group and if Rachel, Rachel is the name, Rachel is the Mothers of Influence um, facilitator, is that right? She's facilitating this group. So she started a group in Guatemala. She was praying for someone to, she was praying for a way to do this because she doesn't speak Spanish well. So she was praying in March and was like, I don't know how to do this. Please, Heavenly Father, help me figure this out. And then Rachel was talking to Lori and Lori has a daughter-in-law in Brazil. So all of these ladies, like from all over the place who aren't connected, suddenly become connected in order to do this meeting. So I've, it's like, it's kind of blows my mind that I translated for a Mothers of Influence group yesterday in Guatemala. And I've never met any of these ladies before. And it's because over a year ago, I felt inspired to, to attend one of Lori's things. And then someone said a prayer, Rachel, asking Heavenly Father to help her move forward with this meeting. And then Lori happened to talk about her daughter-in-law in Brazil and her desires to send this international. And so then Lori connects me to Rachel. Is that not kind of crazy? That's just like, where did that come from? I think that that came from heaven. I, I think that that came from God. I think God is inspiring people. And so part of me feels like this is a whale for me because I don't want to do this. I don't feel capable. I'm not your girl. I'm not the person who, who, who should be doing this, but I am. So what can I do? I mean, I can despair and say, okay, I'm dead. I'm, I'm in this whale and I'll never see shore again. Or I can just kind of be patient and wait for it and see how it all comes out. I'm not sure how this will play out. I don't know where this will go. It was a beautiful experience to be translating for them because these are four women from Guatemala who don't know well-educated heart, but they feel a change in their hearts because of what they're learning. And what they're studying is the children's book of virtues, which I've never read, but I've heard a lot of good things about. And they just shared from their hearts and it was lovely. And so I was really grateful for the opportunity. I was inspired by what Rachel is doing by trying to reach out and do this humanitarian effort and connect to women in another country and how she's using her gifts, even though she doesn't have everything she needs, She's willing to pray about it and be inspired and led to know who can help her. So I know Spanish and I can help her and she doesn't have all the pieces, but she knows that God has all the pieces. And so when we have a project in our life or when we have an opportunity or a service assignment or anything, when we feel called to do something and we don't have all the pieces yet, God has the pieces. When we turn to him, he can connect us. He can bring others who can. So I felt inspired by being involved in this, by seeing what other people are doing and by this opportunity to share what little that I have and know and can do to help someone else in their efforts in what they're doing. And I'm excited to see what will happen because of this. I, like, I always wonder, okay, Heavenly Father, why am I doing this? And then eventually I find out and then, oh, that's why I'm doing that. 
And that's really exciting and like, that's very confirming to me. It, it always increases my faith and my testimony to know that a year ago, God started this in the making, but probably even before that. And so little things are happening that we don't even realize where it will take us and what will happen. Thank you. I just think that's so neat that it actually happened, that it came together and happened. So thank you, Linnell, for being brave and for really going outside of your comfort zone and doing, you know, seeing that that was something you were being led to. I, I just love that. I think that's so neat that it is beginning to go, you know, outside of um, a hair because there are no moms that don't that's I'm doing I'm using double negatives every mom out there needs this kind of influence so anyway thank you everybody for being here thanks for sticking around those of you who did this was a very sweet discussion I think it helps us to see how and why Heavenly Father keeps telling Marley Billings the mother of influence you know starter that this needs to happen in our neighborhoods because if it was happening in our neighborhoods and if we all, just, just the six of us that are on the screen right now, if we were all within a neighborhood and the stuff was going on with Sarah, can you imagine the kind of support and help that she would have in this time in her life, you know? Or Ida, you're having that thing that happened with the girls yesterday and you just message somebody and ask if they can go take a walk with you and you go walk and talk, you know? Linnell, you're laboring over whether you're gonna do this or not or, you know, but we can we can just have that kind of support right there this kind of support right there you can see why why our heavenly father wants us to have this in our lives i mean we're blessed to have this connection we have so i'm not t trying to take anything away from what we have because it is incredible and it's this powerful i think because we somehow we are going to be able to help other women understand how much they need this and help walk them through establishing these kinds of connections. Ida, go ahead. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Uh -huh. Can you hear me now? <laughs> okay. Um, I think, I don't know what my computer's doing. Calm down. Okay. <laughs> I think that it's kind of intimidating to connect with people in your neighborhood. Do you know, like if I said, I just need a moment, you know, to clean my house, I would be a little terrified if a bunch of women showed up. <laughs> I'd be like, no, actually, I mean, I don't really know if I'm ready for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like sometimes it's easier to connect on Zoom because you're like, yeah, I understand and I love you and I support you. And I, I'm not, I'm not saying that it's either one's bad or, but I'm just saying that I feel like maybe it was easier for us to connect because sometimes it's like, well, I know they care about me and I just really need somebody to tell me that it's going to be okay. And I don't really want six people to show up to my house every day. <laughs> and you're not worried because you know they can't. So you right. can right. share that stuff that you wouldn't share if you were worried that they but, might show up at your door. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, like, like our, the little Mothers of Influence group that I started, like we're kind of far apart, but I feel like, I mean, we only had like, what, two meetings now. And I don't know, like, I just don't know how it's gonna, like how we're gonna make those connections. I feel like that's like one, I think that's hard for some of the other ladies. They're like, well, I don't know. <laughs> Should I really share my soul here? <laughs> yeah. So I don't know, but I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure there's a way. <laughs> well, I'm really, time. I'm just really interested in it because I feel like there's got to be a reason for that because I'm on this, I'm on your side with this because I feel like, well, I don't know, this virtual thing is pretty awesome because you are able to be that vulnerable because you don't have that worry. <laughs> so, but there's got to be a reason that we're going to need that, you know, and maybe it's not for that. Maybe this kind of connection doesn't happen in person meetings i don't know maybe, maybe there's, there's pros and cons to both who knows yeah, i mean right. you know i'm sure right. there is but right and i don't i don't suppose to know i just know that there's a reason for it so uh, i don't know i guess we'll find out over time when it starts to grow in the way it needs to but it's also you know heavenly father whenever he says a thing here's the thing that you really need to do 
how many people actually do that? You know, that's a handful compared to all the people who could do that, right? So I don't know. I just, I believe that there are blessings there, opportunity, maybe it's opportunities. Maybe it's more just that you have an opportunity to serve and help others see what can be possible. You're not going to get anything back from it, maybe, or not. I mean, you will, but you know, it's not so much for you, but it's for you to bring this opportunity to other people. I don't know. I don't, I, but it's interesting, but I'm just a hundred percent grateful for this group and for what has been able to happen here. And I never would have ever anticipated this, but I'm so grateful for all of you. And I do, I don't, you count each other as friends, as real genuine friends. We are so very blessed. Anyway, thanks for staying around longer. I appreciate it. And just felt like that was supposed to happen today. So I'm really glad, Sarah, that you opened up. That was just so sweet and so tender to be able to share and remember and hopefully be able to help a little bit. And don't hesitate to reach out when you're feeling those moments because none of us can show up at your door and you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> but you can at least feel like you're not alone. Even though nobody's there to help wash the dishes, you know, you still can know. All right. Okay. It's okay. We all are feeling like this or do. Thank you. No, we love you. Thanks everybody for being so sweet and supportive. Uh, I love it. I love it. Thanks. And um, go find that talk. Anybody who feels like you want to go find that talk, receiving answers to prayers. It really is powerful. Thanks, Linnell, too, for sharing. Thanks for sticking around so long. Sweet girl, that was so meaningful. That was so good that you did that and so brave to be that vulnerable. I really appreciated the the connection that I received in return. That was really, really meaningful for me. Well, I feel like maybe last week you needed to share that and maybe you just couldn't and maybe during the week you just couldn't, you know, but, but you were gifted that opportunity today. <laughs> Because Heavenly Father knew that you would get a lot out of just hearing what you heard. Mm -hmm. I felt really bad today during the the first, like the the original hour, because I felt like the conversation kept like I don't know stalling. Yeah, and I was like, oh man, like it, we've got to have some kind of a conversation going, but I wasn't ready yet. Like I hadn't formed the thoughts in my head yet to be able to really contribute yeah but then, then when when we were off recording it finally <laughs> came together but yeah well and I and I should confess I never turned it off I meant to but I never did it's been recording the whole time <laughs> but and so I kind of feel like I don't know with people's permission it might be a really sweet thing to share somewhere because it's such a meaningful discussion and I think it's what our discussion was supposed to be, but it's just so hard to do it. It's so hard to be vulnerable, you know, and maybe not. Maybe it's just a private personal thing for those of us who were here and that's OK. But isn't that a sweet thing that the Lord lets the hour long meeting kind of stall and be just kind of this thing? And that's OK. It's all right, even though it's going to be recorded, it's going to be up there. It doesn't matter because he still was able to accomplish his purposes which was helping you. It was really sweet. We could even split it and say, this is this is our original hour and then here's a bonus episode. That's what I was thinking. I was gonna just reach out to each one of you and but I wanted to talk, ask you first before, I didn't want you to feel any pressure with other people saying, sure, yeah, fine, you know. Um, but I think it might be a very sweet little, just additional thing to, to have moms be able to watch a recording where, Oh, wow. You mean I, I'm not the only one who's, you know, failing, failing. Um, I'd be comfortable with that for sure. Thanks. You're so sweet. We'll go ahead and ask the other ladies. Okay. I will ask him. But, uh, but do you see how much he loves you? You know, the fact that he would, he would, he would allow that whole hour to go by and for you to then have that opportunity 
to be able to share what you felt, to provide you a smaller group, a little more private setting, to be able to have the courage to share that. Yeah, for sure. That's been a theme <laughs> the past couple weeks for me. I had this lady, uh, this older lady, uh, stopped me in a grocery store and she just commented on my kids and just started like just spouting truth that I needed to hear. And at the end, she she started to walk away and she said, no, do you know Heavenly Father's aware of you? Wow. Oh, Sarah. <laughs> to really be driven home that Heavenly Father is aware of me. So anyway. <laughs> No, isn't that beautiful? Because you're one person. You're yeah. one person. And he wants you to know. And he gives you different opportunities to know that. Yeah. One person in a little tiny invisible corner of the world. <laughs> but he's still aware. Yeah. It's really, really lovely. Yeah. And how wonderful that people respond to those promptings to do something, say something, to mm -hmm. share. Yeah. I love that. I've seen it before in my life. Really? Uh, but yeah, just in the middle of the conversation, she asked, are you LDS? And then she started like wording things in a little different way, but still on the same thread. Yeah. And just really lovely. Wow. But, and yeah. you know, I do think Kelly Father sends people, right? He prompts people to go share, say things, whatever. And I wonder sometimes if he doesn't send angels other times when he can't find a person to go do it, you know? <laughs> Could very well be. Yeah, because I do believe, you know, that the pre that the the heaven, you know, um, why can't I think of the word? But you know, the other side of the veil is just here. We just it's just like another dimension or something, and we just can't, we're not aware of it, but that they're all here. Mm -hmm. finer matter yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah true yeah but it's Very interesting true. that the the place you're in right now is hard Sarah it just is those early years as beautiful and sweet as they are they are just as difficult and it's that is the refining mm -hmm. process for women I believe 100 percent that's why going to work it it I mean, I won't say this in big groups, but um, it just absolutely um, hinders Heavenly Father's plan for mothers because the sacrifices you make, oh, you know, that consecrating your life to your family is what's, what can sanctify us as women. And we either accept that response, that opportunity, or we reject it. And, um, and even that can give us guilt, you know, I mean, there's just, there's guilt on every corner and we can pick it up all day long, but we just have to decide, no, I'm not, I'm not going to pick up the guilt. I'm going to pick up the good. I'm going to pick up the hope and the faith and the trust and the love, and I'm not going to pick up the guilt. It's so beautiful too, the things that heavenly father like leaves for us, like all along the way, like your story about the flowers just feeling inspired to plant flowers it yeah. just reminded me that the scripture in the doctrine and covenants that describes plants as being for taste and for smell for food and for raiment to please yes. the eye and to gladden the heart yes that's just important to us as humans right <laughs> we need that uplifting and he knows it right to give it to us everywhere so that's really those cool. are scriptures that are good to put up in front of you to be reminded of i used to have things, quotes and scriptures just taped all over my house, cupboard doors, inside, outside, refrigerator, you know, mirrors, doors, doorways, everywhere, because I needed constant nourishment, constant reminders of the good so that I didn't get pulled down. Mm. I love that. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to pick some scriptures and just put them up. Mm -hmm. Just any of the things that speak to you. And, um, but yeah, yeah, things don't have to smell. Things don't have to taste, you know, for just getting through this life. That's not required. It's gifted. And I love that. And how many, how many kinds of trees do we really have to have? Couldn't we just have flower, 
tree, you know, adornments for this world, right? And instead yeah. we have all kinds of variety and all kinds of colors and smells and things. And I just, I love that. That testifies of Heavenly Father's love for me when I go outside. That's so wonderful. Well, I think I, I've got to head okay. out. Okay. Thank you for, so much for taking the time to talk with me and yeah. for fostering the discussion all around. Absolutely. Absolutely. We love you. You have just been, you've been so completely adopted into this group. I hope you know that you are just, and I, every time I, when I have to do something that has your email address, which isn't very often, but when I see stunningly Sarah, I just love that. So would you remember that? Would you put stunningly Sarah somewhere that you see? <laughs> I will. Thank you. Okay. I love you, sweetie. Have a great week. You too. Bye.